Um, what was I doing? The reason I brought logged on the ranger. There's a reason for that. My my first character in EverQuest was a um, somebody asked this question earlier. Um, was a Shadow Knight. No, oh, my first character was a rogue on the the Valenzac server, PvP server, but that didn't last very long because you can't get anything done on a PvP server. You spend all your time worrying about getting killed. So we all jumped ship and went over to a blue server. And my first character on the blue server was a Shadow Knight. Still exists. Still on uh, Zagony. Um, but then I shortly thereafter made a um, a ranger back when rangers sucked. Um, like here. And um, fell in love with the class. Even though they were horrible, even though they were gimped, even though they were completely freaking useless. It was my favorite character class because tracking. I uh, could always find exactly the mob I was looking for. And um, yeah. That character still exists to this day too. And he's still only level 85. I've never had a max level character. Never. It's not the way I play. I want to say Asheron's Call is my favorite for nostalgic reasons. Um, the gameplay in EverQuest is better. Um, well, alright, no, that's not true. The gameplay in Asheron's Call was better. EverQuest was a better game. Um, Asheron's Call was actually my first MMO. Um, Ashron's Call is very dynamic, very active, very fast, very fast. Um, like in EverQuest, you'll find a mob, like if you're playing solo, and you'll fight it, and it'll die. You'll recoup, move on to the next one. In Ashron's Call, you'll fight a room full of bad guys all at once, um, especially when you're fully buffed. And uh, it's very fast, very fast paced. Um, I always played unarmed characters, and they punch things really quick. Like, like, kind of like a monk in EverQuest, but really fast. Um, that was the first game I played, and I played that for quite a while. Um, but, you know, as I mentioned earlier, half of my friends were playing EverQuest, the other half were playing Ashron's Call. So I wanted to see what the other half, how the other half lived. And I came to EverQuest, and at first I found the pace a little too slow for my liking. But then I started getting into it. Completed my first quest kind of thing, you know. Um, first accomplishment. And um, that was the advantage that EverQuest had over Ashron's Call, was when you accomplish something, it felt like an accomplishment. Um, so there. That's that. I, well, that too. That too. <laughs> um, the zoning thing kind of threw me off at first in EverQuest. Um, I couldn't figure out why... Every time I went to a new area, I had to go through a zone, because in Ashron's Call, it was a continuous world. Um, if you could see it, you could run to it, literally. And um, there were no zones. Uh, the only time you zoned, and it wasn't even really a zone, it was just uh, moving you from this location to this location, um, was when you were going to one of the islands that surrounded the main overall continent. Um, you couldn't swim there, because there was no swimming in the game. And they had the invisible walls, you know, that they throw in the games. But you could still see the island. It was right there. You just couldn't get to it because of the invisible walls. So you take a portal to get over to it. Um, but if you could see over to that island, if you could see that far, you could see the other p players running around on it. So it was literally a one wide open world. It was. No longer exists. Um, and that was just amazing to me. The ability to just run all the way around the entire world. And then I came over to EverQuest, and I'm zoning. And I'm, what's the zoning thing? But I understand why they have the zoning thing here. Uh, it allows them to cram more content into an area. Um, so much easier on their uh, ser on their servers, on your computer, the whole the whole nine yards. Because at the time, you know, we're running on 400 megahertz processors. 256 megabytes of RAM was my first computer, and that's why I ran AC and uh, uh, EQ on. Uh, Ashron's Call came out just a little bit after EverQuest did. Um, EverQuest beat him to the punch. 
Asheron's call or EverQuest had Sony, Asheron's call had Microsoft. Which one's better at promoting games? <laughs> and this was before uh, pre Xbox days. Um, so Microsoft really didn't know what they were doing when it came to gaming. But Sony had already had a foot in the door with uh, the PlayStation and whatnot. So, yeah. But that's not the beginning of my gaming, that's just the beginning of my MMO career. Um, career. Gaming started with Pong. The uh, very first console I ever got was back in the late 70s and it was Pong with a little paddle controller. Um, and I got every console right up through the PlayStation 1 and that's when I stopped doing the console thing. Somebody was asking for that earlier. I don't know. Now, for my very first one, 400 megahertz AMD K6. 256 megabytes of RAM. 32 megabyte video card. I don't remember which one. But it was 30, 32 megabytes, and that was considered pretty badass at the time. Um, be right back. Need a coffee. WoW was one of those that I resisted for a long time. I didn't want to play WoW. I didn't didn't want to get onto WoW. I was um, doing uh, EverQuest, Asheron's Call, City of Heroes, uh, Anarchy Online. I don't know how many of you have ever played that. Um, some of the smaller ones. Did not want to do WoW. Because everybody I knew that was on the other games was jumping ship to go to WoW. It may have been a voodoo, but I don't think so. I think it was the other one. Um, and I can't remember right off the top of my head what it was uh, at the time, what the two big names were. Um, but I don't think it was a voodoo. I think it was uh, the other one. But yeah, I did not want to do WoW. Did not want to do it. Um... Then after uh, BC came out, I finally decided to take the plunge, and uh, that was it for the next year, year and a half. Um, and then I kind of tapered off on it a bit. Went back when Cataclysm came out, realized I just didn't want to do this. Played on some of the private servers, had a lot of fun on those. Had more fun on those than I did on the live servers. But it all, kind of like what EverQuest did with the uh, live servers, all kind of fragmented because it, they added the... Uh, group finder and the raid finder and all these things where you just didn't need to communicate with other people anymore. And I, I wish they would understand that in order to keep an MMO alive, you have to encourage communication. You have to encourage people to talk to each other. Because that's the only way they're going to stay alive. That's the point, isn't it? Isn't it the point to play in, playing an MMO is playing it with other people? I don't know. I honestly don't remember Zen. Um... It may have been a voodoo, I don't remember, but I don't think it was. I just, I really don't think it was. I know voodoo was the big one, but then there was another, it was like ATI and um, NVIDIA now. Um, I still have, I think I still have it actually down in the basement. Um, or at least one very much like it down in the basement. I still have my original processor too, my original uh, K AMD K6. Still got that down in the basement. Neat stuff. Be right back. I need coffee. ATI Rage. Does that sound familiar? Rage, yeah, that's what it was. 32 megabyte ATI Rage. Had to step away for a minute to think about it. Um, that's what that's what card I had. All my friends had Voodoo's. I had an ATI Rage. Um, the story behind that computer: I got a job at the um, local game shop when I was living in Florida, and um, the owner decided one day that I needed a computer because they wanted me to work on a website they wanted me to build a website now mind you I have no computer had at the time no computer experience whatsoever um, closest I'd come up to this point to doing anything on a computer was like um, the Tandy Radio Shacks 
that would only run basic and um, uh, Apple 2C, you know, played some games on that, but that was it. Oh, and the uh, Timex Sinclair. Do you remember those? Use the uh, cassette tape drive. Um, had the um, little flat panel keyboard thing. Um, that was the only computer experience I'd had prior to this point. And the uh, owner of the hobby shop um, brings over a box of parts and a case. He says, here's your computer, put it together, install the operating system, and um, let me know how you make out. <laughs> so I had to figure this all out from scratch, basically. Um, didn't even have an internet connection at the time. It was all dial-up. Um, so I uh, got the computer put together, figured it out eventually. Um, it all only went together one way. <laughs> Getting uh, Windows 98 installed was a, was a hoot and a half. Um, installed the AOL disk for my to start up my AOL account and got on the internet and then my god it was all over from that point <laughs> good times good memories but that was my first computer And I've built every single one I've owned since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, you know, when, when your back's up against the wall, it's pretty neat to see what people will come up with. Um, you know, as a means of survival. Does... Uh, the, the embargo thing kind of bothers me. Um, does anybody really think you're going to change somebody's mind about their form of government simply by not trading with them? Because there's always going to be somebody else to trade with them. You know, we won't, but, you know, Russia will, for example. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine. Cobble together pieces of things. Random numbers of wheels. <laughs> Whatever they can piece together and make it work. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. There's always going to be countries that trade with them. So what? They don't get it from the United States. They get it from somebody else. What's the point? All you're doing is making it harder for the people that live there. If we're supposed to be so capitalist. Why aren't we selling our goods to whoever wants to buy it? I don't know. That's a different conversation altogether, though. That's one of the things that led me to uh, getting out of uh, nursing care, was uh, the changes in um, the American medical system. You'd spend most of your time just doing paperwork now. It's all paperwork now. There's no time to care for people, it's all filling out forms. Yeah, yeah. And that's all because of insurance. It's, you used to be able to pay for most most of your uh, health care out of pocket. I remember, you know, when I was a kid, uh, this stuff cost nothing. You, you have a checkup, it costs 20 bucks. You know. And your parents would just pay it out of pocket. Health, insurance didn't pay for that. You needed medicine, you paid for it out of pocket. Insurance didn't pay for that. Um, now everything is thrown on the insurance card. And, th and then they wonder why the premiums are so high and why the deductibles are so high. Well, duh. I mean, they don't wonder. I mean, they know exactly why. But it's not free, Doffy. It's not free. Somebody has to pay for it. It's the great lie of... Uh, countries with um, national health care is that it's free and it's not free it's not free those doctors need to be paid that money has to come from somewhere yeah yeah well the, the taxes are money that they're taking from other people to pay for it and um, and that's nothing nothing remotely resembling free somebody is paying for that with their labor
You know, that's what I mean, Jadil. It's, it's, it's all about paperwork now, and you, you don't have time to care for people because you're too busy filling out forms. That's, that's why I got out of nursing, for a, a large part of why I got out of nursing. It was all about um, overhead and uh, bottom lines. And, you know, I understand these places have to make money to stay in business and whatnot, but, uh, you know, you, you can't forget why you're there in the first place. No. Um, and I was only in senior care. I wasn't in the actual medical care. It was just senior care. What, what, what is our national debt up to? 20, 23 trillion dollars? Something like that? You're, you're never going to accumulate that much wealth in t from tax dollars. Never. Never. And that's just the United States. That's not all the other countries that you know are in debt to these central banks. Whole another conversation. No amount of um, any kind of reform is going to fix anything. It, it's too late. It's way too late for that. It's been way too late for that. Um, the numbers we're talking about are just... Uh, and, and, you know, bear in mind, I'm no economist. I, um, but I read, um, and the the amount of debt that we that we owe is so astronomically high, so ridiculously high, so inconceivably high. Um, again, we owe more money than actually exists in the world, and that's you know all nations, all economies, all currencies. And you can't really blame the government either, um, because we vote for them. <laughs> you know, we were the ones in control, and then we gave them control. Um, we elected Woodrow Wilson. He sold us down the river. Not we, of course, we weren't born then, but uh, you know, we as a nation allowed that to happen. I think the United States scared a lot of people um, when it was created. We had a good thing, we had such a good thing going. Oh man, it was beautiful.